Welcome back everyone and happy Monday. So May is National Barbecue Month. Celebrity historian Rafi Adonian is here to school us on how barbecue got started, also the many different styles and cultures surrounding it. Rafi, I love when you're here because you can make things that we think, uh, I mean, how interesting can it be? You make everything fun. So thank you for being here and of teaching course. us well, a little Well, food something. is certainly fun and food yes, has culture reflected in it and culture is always associated with history. So barbecue is a great example of that. And we do love that here in Texas. So what, what are some interesting things about barbecue that we should know? What I think of barbecue is it really is an American food because of the way it brings together different cultures. Now, it goes back to Christopher Columbus. You think that's connected what? to the story of America? Now, Columbus shows up in North America. He's really actually in the Caribbean. And uh -huh. in the Caribbean, he encounters indigenous folks who are using green wood, which is moist wood, to use indirect heat on the meat. Well, think about what happens with the Spanish Empire after that. It goes across the continents, right? Hernando right. de Soto comes here through Texas as well. And there are some accounts associated with de Soto. And so with that, you have the European influence on these meats. And I'll give you an example okay. how. Think about how Europeans love to baste meat, to put the juice in there. They enjoy so, that basting business. Exactly. Well, think about, we think of barbecue, we think of moisture, yes. right? So in Virginia, North Carolina, where it's very English, mm -hmm. you have a lot of uh, very vinegar-based stuff. In South Carolina, where it's very French and German, you have a lot of mustard-based. Think about Dijon mustard or, yeah. you know, the, the bratwurst, right? Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about it in the Southeast is they're using a lot of pig and pork. So that's why I brought pulled pork and yes. ham to represent that. Why are they using pork? Well, in the South, they eat five to one pork to beef prior to the Civil War, believe it or not. Really? Why is that happening? Because there, they don't have the same open spaces. And so what happens is pork pe or pigs can go around yeah. in the wild. When they go around the wild, that meat gets tough. Oh, when the meat yeah. gets tough, tenderizing the barbecue makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So that's the process. However, as Expansion West happens here in Texas, here there's a lot more space. So yes, here, we, we have a little <laughs> bit of that here, yeah. So the, the cows, can, the cattle can go right. out in the open. So here you can have a lot more of the beef. So the, of course the classic Texas oh, dish yeah, is of favorite. course the brisket, yes. right? So that's how you have the difference in the barbecue style, but the Texas influence doesn't end there. Let's go over to Memphis, which is a port city. Over mm -hmm. there, because there's a lot of trade, you're going to have molasses and that sweet taste that Memphis tends to have. So of course the last place that we think of is, within the context mm -hmm. of major barbecue places is Kansas City, another major stop. Right. Well, Texas's influence is felt over there too, because Kansas City originates from the, a Memphis barbecue maker going to Kansas City, but he didn't follow all the rules for pork, so he brought in the beef from Texas. So that's why in Kansas City you get a lot of burnt ends, for example, which is beef, but with that moist sauce of Memphis. So it's the kind of this hybrid. Ends, that's, that's right. That's my favorite kind. Well, that's I the love Kansas that City kind of, style. I always get it, the end piece. So it's an example of how that Texas and Memphis is hybrid in Kansas City. Now, when we think of Memphis, of course, we think of ribs. So oh, I brought yeah. the ribs as yes. well, the baby back ribs. Sometimes you can also see St. Louis style uh -huh. ribs, which is nearby there. So that's how you get all these different cultural influences in what we think of barbecue and the slow cooking. Now, one of the things that I think is fascinating is what is barbecue? Is it always a slow cooking right. or is it grilling? What do you think? Because, uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes someone says, I was doing a barbecue this weekend. You were just talking about cooking. it earlier. I would think it would be I slow. I think of that that way, too, especially having lived in the South yeah. for part of my life. But where I grew up in California, for example, when you say barbecuing, it means you're grilling. And there's yeah. a huge debate about that. But grilling wasn't a big deal until after World War II. After World War II, you had the Cold War. In the context of the Cold uh -huh. War, you have, for example, uh, this, no this uh, notion of we got to show American democracy and American fortitude. And think about how we think of red meat to this day in yes. the backyard, right? Yes, I'm strong. We do. It's prosperous. We do it July 4th. That's right. Big that's right. So it's contrasting over to, of mm -hmm. course, the Soviet Union. But a couple other things happened in that period in the 1950s when barbecue grilling, grilling particularly blows up. One of them is gender roles. You were just talking about it earlier. So for example, in, uh -huh. when you have the rise of corporate jobs for yeah. men no longer working as much with their hands, there's this notion of, let me go back to the origins of meat and Gotta play with fire. Stuff. And you just talked about your husband doing that well, over the weekend and exactly. you were doing the domestic stuff. Yes. And that was reinforced in the 1950s. The women doing this stuff on the sides and mm -hmm. the cleanup and the man playing the with the meat. fire, right? Yes. And there's also an American story there. Remember, this is a very American in the way called come together but I think grilling is that way too yeah because, for example, there is this notion of we're going back to our heritage as pioneers. Yeah. And so we're out on the you know, frontier as cowboys and grilling. 
and or this notion of barbecue as uh, grilling especially and, and this kind of barbecue yeah. has a lot of cultural influences. James Beard to this day, the Beard Awards are mm -hmm. named mm -hmm. after him, yeah. had a book on barbecue and pontificated about all the different cultural influences that come into it. The story of immigration is the story of America. Who so that's how you had the rise of grilling post-World War II as well and hence the divide in what is actual barbecue. Can I just have a <laughs> one one hundredth of your memory please? I love how food, I love history, amazing. it all comes together here. You're how tasting no history and culture when you're eating barbecue no matter what style. Well Rafi you are the best, thank you so much. <laughs> all I know is all the men in here are like yeah 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 Rafi but can we have that beef? Of so course, like, absolutely. No, you? no, no, of course it's going to stay here for, uh, for the, us to feast. Oh my gosh, well thank you for that lesson in barbecue. Of I love course. it. Who knew? Who Next knew? time you eat it, just remember the taste of history. I will think of all of those <laughs> things, Rafi. And if you would like more on Rafi, he really is the best, you guys. He has a website at celebrityhistorian.com. You can also follow him on Instagram at celebrity underscore historian. Thank you so much, Thank friend. You.